One way in which we can derive the length contraction equation that comes from special relativity is by using Lorentz transformations, which is exactly what we're going to examine in this lecture. So let's begin by supposing we have two inertial reference frames, one given by f and the second one given by f prime. Now the time in frame f is given by t and the time in frame f prime is given by t prime. Now let's suppose that frame f consists of the x, y, and z axis while frame f prime consists of the x prime, y prime, and z prime axis. Now at a time of t equals t prime equals zero seconds, let's suppose our two frames are superimposed. So the origin of frame f lies on top of the origin of frame f prime. So x and x prime coincide, y and y prime coincide, and z and z prime coincide. Now let's move on to diagram 2. Let's suppose as time progresses, as time increases, our reference frame f remains at rest while our frame f prime begins to move along the x-axis in the positive direction with a velocity given by v. So we basically take an object with a certain length and we place that object so that it lies along the x-axis. We take that object, we place it along the x-axis on frame f. So an object with a length given by L0 is placed along the x-axis in frame F. So the object and the frame are not moving. Now the coordinate points of our object are given by x1 and x2. So the beginning point is x1 and the final point is x2. So that means we can define the length of the object in frame F by using equation A. So L0 is equal to x2 minus x1. This equation will become important in just a moment. Now, let's suppose our object is now placed into frame given by f prime. Now, if that object was found in frame f prime, the coordinate points would be different. Now, the coordinate points are given by x1 prime and x2 prime. Now, if the length of the object is defined by a variable l, then equation b gives us the length of our object as it lies along the x prime axis in frame f prime. So L is equal to x2 prime minus x1 prime. Now finally let's apply Lorentz equation. So recall that x is equal to alpha multiplied by x prime plus v multiplied by t prime, where alpha is given by the following equation. Usually alpha is given by gamma, but in my lecture we're going to label this using alpha. So what exactly does this equation tell us? Well, if we know what x prime is in frame f prime, and if we know what v and t prime are, then we can find that corresponding point within frame f. So this equation basically gives us a way to transform point x prime into point x. So we can transform a coordinate point from f prime in to frame f. And that's exactly what we want to do. So let's begin with equation A. Equation A tells us L0 is equal to x2 minus x1, where x2 is the coordinate point within our frame f, and x1 is also the coordinate point within frame f. So basically, what exactly is this coordinate point in terms of x prime? So from this equation, we see that x2 is equal to alpha multiplied by x2 prime plus v multiplied by t2 prime. And this is minus, so we're subtracting x1. And x1 is equal to, from this equation, alpha multiplied by x1 prime plus v 
v multiplied by t1 prime. So basically, now we can basically take out this alpha, and that's exactly what we do. So we combine. So alpha multiplied by x2 prime minus x1 prime plus v times t2 prime minus v times t1 prime. Now, Notice that because t2 prime is equal to t1 prime, that basically means because we're taking our measurement at the same exact moment in time, so these two are equal, then t2 prime is equal to t1 prime and these will cancel out. And we're left with alpha multiplied by x2 prime minus x1 prime. Now what exactly is x2 prime minus x one prime. Well, that's simply given by equation B, that is equal to L. So this entire quantity becomes L. So we see that L naught is equal to alpha multiplied by L. So now let's actually solve for L. So L is equal to L naught divided by alpha, where alpha is this quantity. So if we replace alpha with this, we get the following result. And this is exactly the same length contraction equation that we spoke about in our lecture on length contraction. So L is equal to L naught multiplied by the square root of 1 minus V squared divided by C squared, where C is the speed of light in a vacuum and V is the speed of reference frame given by F prime. So basically, L naught is the length of our object when that object is found within the frame that is stationary, that is not moving, while L is the length of our object within the frame that is moving with a very high velocity given by V. So because this quantity, this radical, is always less than 1, that basically means L naught will always be greater than L, and that's exactly why the length of the object contracts as it travels with a high velocity along the x-axis.